A key inflation gauge used by the Federal Reserve rose 3.5% in June, the fastest gain since 1991. Fed officials say they expected this rise in inflation as the economy reopens. According to the latest jobs report, the economy gained 850,000 jobs in June, the strongest one-month gain since last summer. We have new exclusive Hill-Harris-X data that gauges voters' views on the future of the economic recovery. Let's take a look. One week ago, President Biden said inflation was temporary. He went on to say that spending trillions more would, and I quote, reduce inflation, reduce inflation, reduce inflation. Madam Speaker, I think he's the only one who believes that. First of all, the good news is the economy is picking up significantly. It's rational when you think about it. The cost of an automobile it's kind of back to what it was before the pandemic. We compare what the prices were for the last year in the pandemic, and they are up. They're up because, in fact, there was not much to call for. The survey found that inflation topped the list of voters' concerns about the future of the U.S. economy at 31 percent, followed by the national debt at 22 percent and a tie between the unemployment rate and economic inequality, both at 15 percent. Concern varies when you break the data down by party. GOP voters and independent voters are more concerned about inflation, while Democratic voters care more about inequality. However, voters across party lines had inflation in the top three. Kim, what's your take? You know, I understand inflation definitely being the number one concern for most people. That obviously affects our day in and day out lives. But I always am just so curious, who really cares about the national debt? I mean, I know that this is kind of a, a GOP, you know, talking point. They're always saying, oh, but the debt, the debt, the debt, you know, we can't get ourselves in so much debt. And I understand that on a personal level, I don't want a lot of credit card debt. I don't want a lot of bank debt. I understand how that impacts my life. But I don't know how through the generations anyone has looked at the national debt, which has obviously just grown and grown and grown and grown as the decades have passed and thought, wow, that really affects my day in and day out. You know, right. I just wonder who are the people that and obviously with the GOP, that was a big concern of theirs, whereas for Democratic voters, not so much for them. So. So, there, there, yeah, there's been some research on this. And basically what's going on is that this is coming from people who have heard the media talking about the national debt. Like it, it's almost it's almost that simple. If you know, <laughs> if, if you're in, if you're in a in a state where the media is talking about nothing but the national debt and deficit, and then you run a survey and you ask people what their biggest concern about the economy is, you'll see a, a spike in the number of people saying that it's the debt because, you know, you know, a lot of people think that economics are hard. Uh, it's and and that's by design. You know the you know the economics profession and and the elites you know want you to think that economics is difficult. Just leave leave it to the experts. Don't worry about it. And so when they get the question from the pollster, they think, what well, what's the media talking about lately? The correct answer is the debt or is the deficit, whatever they're talking about. And so they give that correct answer to, to right. pollsters. And and then well, when it the, sounds smart, right. 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 It, it sounds, it sounds smart. smart. They want to, you know, everybody wants to sound smart in front of when right. they're when they're answering questions. It feels like a test. And so when the and media, look, I think yeah. it's important, you know, it's important to, to, to care about the national debt. I'm sure it is to some degree, but yeah, I, I don't think the really. average person. Well, and that's <laughs> the thing is the average person. What can the average person say that that how what that what does that actually impact? So it's so interesting to me that still half the GOP, you know, many of the GOP voters, I should say, um, sit there and say, well, the national debt is like my big concern. It's not right. inequality or unemployment. I mean, you'd think unemployment would be. That affects your daily life. Right. And, but although inflation af affects your daily life, too. And so, you know, right. inflation that, you know, in, inflation has hurt 
uh, Democrats and has hurt the kind of progressive liberal project before in the 1970s when it got out of control. And so, you know, it, it is something to it is something to watch. But, you know, inflation has been running for years and years and years under under the inflation target that the that the Fed has set. And so I think, you know, the Democratic leadership is is handling it, it appropriately. It is something worth watching. I had talked earlier about that, you know, if, if, if you want an answer to it, you could you can uh, you can target monopolies that are driving prices up and, you know, and kind of and, and put you know, put some, put some of the anger about inflation or potential inflation onto them. If, if, but this is all if it continues. A lot of economists say that there's, there's actually no reason to think that it will continue long term, that these are su supply side shocks and, all, and also the result of the economy opening up. You know, the, you are seeing people with higher savings rates in general from the pandemic. They're now going out to eat much, you know, out to eat more. They're spending more money. You know that's that's cre that's that's mm -hmm. creating a temporary spike. You know, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen cautioned last week that we are likely to continue to see a rise in prices, but she expects that to cool down over time. And as the New York Times notes, Republican lawmakers have dubbed the rise in prices Biden inflation. As the GOP seeks to push back on Biden's economic agenda, a new poll found that six in ten voters said the president is to blame for the recent spike in inflation. Do you think he's to blame, Ryan? Well, no, of course not. I think if, if Trump had been uh, reelected, I think you'd see, you'd see the exact same uh, movements. You know, there's no Biden policy that had anything to do with a, a brief lumber spike in prices. There's nothing that Biden particularly did uh, that, that led to a, a spike in the prices of, of used cars. I think that's absurd. I thought, I thought it was interesting in the, in the data that if you combine inequality and unemployment, which are both, you know, uh, which are both concerns about the stability of the economy, then then you mm -hmm. then you actually uh, marry up. Uh, that's 30 to 31 uh, percent. You know, by by combining those two, so there is still you know a lot of concern about ec economic security out economic insecurity out there. Well, inflation is definitely a concern. You know, we we don't like to see rising prices, and I know that that is probably people are looking at the gas prices or they're looking at the you know, just the meat prices and whatnot, and they're thinking, oh my gosh, uh, you know, is this going to end? Who is to blame? People do want to put the blame on someone when usually this is the, the buildup of several administrations and sometimes just the way economics work. You know, there's right. not, you know, it's just and sometimes the, the way it yeah, goes. The major, and the major structural difference was that in, in the 70s, uh, unionized workers, you know, had built into their contracts a cost of living increase that would be tied to 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 inflation, and so as inflation, uh, you know, numbers ticked up, then wages would would tick up with them, which would then which right. would then drive up other prices. You don't have that that structural situation now. You have something like five percent. Uh, you, you know, union density among the private sector. So there, there aren't the structural factors that are going to drive inflation the, mm -hmm. the way that they did in the past. But uh, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching What America's Thinking, and we will see you next time.